Greetings, Dennis Daniels here. Uh, poking around again on AR sites, and I found a uh, model that demonstrates some of what I'm hoping I to find more of. Uh, this is primarily location based. I'd hope that they would be more able to search for, say, engines. Let's see if they have anything about engines here. Go. Click for details. Go. Can't tell if it's doing anything. Doesn't look like it's searching. So, uh, what I'm going to do is I'll just go ahead and load this model which is an example of architecture and engineering which is what would be a lot nicer than say you know Eugene O'Neill's house or International Hotels I guess that was all very interesting but um, we need uh, AR should be more focused on uh, helping people learn how to manipulate the world around them like this. So let's see what happens. I've got my marker here. I turn the camera. And you can see my coffee cup and the marker. And there is the chair. All right? Now can I put the chair? Can I put my coffee cup on the chair? The chair goes away. Right? There it is. Now if I lift it up. Okay, so there's no there's no interaction between these objects and that object, which is a bit of a bummer because it would be nice if I could then put a marker onto this cup, for example, and have it represented there. But that's another thing altogether. We'll turn the chair and we're able to look at it. <clears throat> I can lift the chair, tilt it, and let's see, there's actually, it looks like there's some seams there seams in the fabrication? Yes, there are. Look at that. Okay, this, sorry, this the paper should be put on to the cardboard. See this? It looks like there's seams. Like he's trying to, like the person who created this model is actually trying to do some sort of veneer work in the chair. Now, can we see underneath the chair? Let's see if we can see underneath the chair. Probably not. See, that's the other thing. You can't you can't rotate the models very well. Um, but there it is. There's our chair next to my coffee cup. Bingo. Now, again, that's all very interesting, and it's a bit of a toy, right? It's a bit of a toy. It doesn't really do much. Let's see. So, what would be really nice to make AR more useful? Uh, in terms of theory and practice. Uh, again, as you've probably recognized, um, I don't have much, I don't put much faith in schools today given how many problems have yet to be solved and so many people still in school. So many people have passed their school and yet we have so many problems. It tells me schools aren't doing their jobs. Schools should be teaching people how to solve problems. And one of the easiest ways to do that um, is through manipulating the problems. Manipulate and solve problems. Alright, Montessori schools do a great job of that. And what I suggest is that schools using augmented reality could show, for example, how molecules work, physics in action, engines and machine theory, prototypes of all kinds. Now, let's see, there it goes. And one of the ways to do that is using an application like R Sites right there. <clears throat> uh, but what R Sites doesn't do, and I haven't found anybody else doing it yet, is we need a tool that integrates better with Google Earth, something that taps into Google Sketches three Google SketchUp's 3D warehouse. That is an amazing huge warehouse. Um, there are other 3D free free 3D tools. Linux has got a bunch of them. So where is Linux in the uh, AR game? Need to find out. Um, one of the things that I would really like to see, and I should do a demonstration of Google SketchUp. Oop, I don't want to do that. Undo. Okay, so um, with Google SketchUp, it's a 3D modeling tool. 
So what I would imagine what would be really nice is if you get a school SketchUp, say, of an engine or a house, and then you explode the SketchUp model into coherent parts. Each part would have its own individual tag, A, B, C, D, whatever. Um, and then print the tags onto some sort of 3D object. Now this is something that doesn't, a 3D object. So that you can manipulate that 3D object in 3D VR space. Because you saw with my paper, paper 2D doesn't really work. The 2D, the 2D marker, don't really work. They're not, um, they're not very useful. Don't really work for 3D models. <coughs> so the tags go on a 3D object so that you can manipulate them in 3D space, uh, and then explode, and then assemble the exploded model with with the aid of the application. So you have all these pieces. You have them all with tags, and then the person would assemble all of those pieces in 3D space. Now, the space, the models themselves could be of whatever. They could be rough. Um, they could be rough models. They could just be, you know, rough circles and squares and shafts, etc. Circles, shafts, rectangles. Just as long as there's, you know, some, you know, vague connection to the object and its object in 3D space. Again, assemble those objects and the software would tell you whether or not you have connected uh, the socket driver to the socket wrench correctly or you have screwed the screw into the right hole on the engine block, etc. And again, for training simulations of repairing expensive or rare things, you don't want people who've not been exposed to your nuclear power station to walk in straight from nuclear power school and just start hacking away on a machine. You could send them to a simulator training environment using augmented reality and have them break machines all day long and fix them all day long without worrying about causing a catastrophic failure in the machine, in the factory, on the car, wherever. Um, education, wow, augmented reality, uh, there's so much you could do in terms of um, skeleton modeling, in terms of um, molecule modeling, physics modeling. There's just so, no shortage of ideas. And you give this kind of you give this kind of tool to a student, and if a good you know, teacher is paying any attention, the teacher will learn more about the subject from the students as they manipulate that world than the teachers could ever teach the students. Um, theoretical exploration of impossible things to see. For example, atoms, molecules, proteins, um, and even, of course, you get the big stuff, modeling big stuff. That didn't work. Why didn't that work? Proteins. <clears throat> um, and then, of course, uh, outside of education or inside education, you've got rapid prototyping for engineering projects, emergency response, city development, problem solving in general. What about assembling difficult machines by untrained personnel? Now, there is definitely a shortage of brains in the world, definitely a shortage of engineers, but if you get some engineers to show you how to assemble stuff, then someone who's got a mo modicum of uh, know-how with tools should be able to assemble whatever it is that you want assembled, even if they uh, have never seen the machine using augmented reality. They should be able to figure out how it's assembled. All kinds of ideas. Augmented reality is huge, and I, re I welcome your thoughts on on my uh, rough ideas on where to go with this. I really think um, augmented reality has a huge, huge future in education. Unfortunately, finding the right environment, um, finding the right school, finding the right teachers is going to be hard. Uh, teachers don't usually have a whole lot of time to think outside their little classrooms. Maybe this will help them. Thanks for watching, and um, if you have a child and you think augmented reality is cool, talk to your teacher about how they're using augmented reality in class.
that should start a conversation. Talk to you. Bye. Thank you.